Hey everybody, Melissa here. So today I'm going to show you how to create multiple dependent drop-down lists in Microsoft Excel. Now what this allows us to do is to define and restrict what can be entered into a cell based on a different cell. And therefore the information in our spreadsheet should be more accurate. I can't wait to show you how this works, so let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a small database of our sales team. So we have our sales reps for the US, Europe, Asia, and the UK, and then we have a list of their support reps assigned to them. Now sometimes you may have this in a separate sheet, and it's basically going to work the same way, but I wanted it in the same sheet so you can easily see how it works. So what we want to be able to do is to select a country, say the USA, and only see a list of our sales reps for the USA. The same thing for Europe, Asia, and the UK. And then when we select a sales rep, say Christina, we only want to see the support reps that are assigned to Christina. If we select Mark, we only want to see his, and so on. The first thing we need to do is to assign our data with named ranges. And we're going to do that from our data tab. Now what this means is if we look at Christina right now, she's in cell E2. We have a name box up here, and it also says E2, which means it is an individual cell. What we need to tell Excel is that Christina, Mark, and Randall belong to the country USA, so that when we do our drop down in the country, that is what we will see. Now how we do that is we're going to select Christina, Mark, and Randall, and I would probably add one or two blank ones. That way, if you add any new sales reps, they'll automatically be included in the name range. And we're going to go up to our name box, and we're going to type in USA and hit enter. And then we're going to do the same thing for Europe, Asia, and the UK. And now if we go back to select our range, you'll see in our name box it now says USA. And this one says Europe, Asia, and the UK. Now we're going to do the same thing for our sales support reps. The only difference is, is instead of using the country, we're going to use the sales rep. So we're going to tell Excel that Ben, Emma, Olivia, and Sam belong to Christina. So when we select Christina as our sales rep, we're only going to see those four in our support rep dropdown. So I'm going to go ahead and select Ben, Emma, Olivia, and Sam, and then probably select maybe two more. That way if I do add support reps, they'll be automatically entered into our named range. So I'm going to go up to our name box and I'm going to type in Christina. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Mark all the way to London. So now we can just check. If I select everybody under Christina, that's correct. Mark is correct. Go to Randall. Ah, look here, I did Haley. And I did that on purpose. And then I also made a typo on purpose. If we go over to Faith, I spelled it incorrectly. Now we can go to the name box and put it as Faith. And then if you do your drop down, you're going to see you have faith spelled correctly and faith spelled incorrectly. And that's not what we want. So if anything like this happens, you make mistakes, you need to add, move, replace. How you're going to do that is you're going to go to your formulas and you're going to go to your name manager. And first I want to find the one that is spelled incorrectly and I'm going to delete it and tell it OK. Now the other thing that we can do is if it's spelled incorrectly, we can go into it, do edit, and we can change it from here, and it's going to keep everything intact. Now for the other one, which I put as Haley instead of Randall, I'm going to edit, and I'm going to tell it Randall. And then I'm going to tell it OK. And then if you notice, I don't have to remove Haley because it automatically replaced her with Randall. So now we're going to close. And then if we go back to Randall, it's showing correctly. If we go to faith, it is spelled correctly. And now we're ready to create our first drop down list, which is for our country. So on our data tab, we're going to go over to our data validation. In allow, we're going to tell it a list. 
in our source, we're going to click our up arrow and we're going to select USA to the UK and hit enter. Then we're going to tell it OK. And now in our drop down, we have USA, Europe, Asia, and the UK. Now, if you need to take it to other cells, you can just drag it like you do any other function or formula, and it's going to put it on each of those cells in that column. And then we can go back up and we can select the USA, we can select Europe, and so on. Now we're going to create the drop down list of our sales reps based on the country that we've selected. To do that, we're going to data. We're going to go to data validation. Our allow is going to be a list. And in our source, we're going to use the indirect function. Now, the easiest way for me to explain the indirect function is it allows us to return a value based on a text string. And it comes in really handy if you're dealing with drop down lists. So if you remember earlier on, we created a named range for Christina, Mark, and Randall called USA so that it shows these three people belong to the USA. And then we created our country list from that. So what we're going to do here for it to pull the correct drop down of sales reps is we're going to tell it to look at cell A2. And it's created this as an absolute cell reference, but we can take out that second dollar sign. So I'm just going to back it up and put a two. And this is going to tell it if this is USA, go to the named range USA and display that. If this is Europe, go to the Europe name range and display that. So we're going to tell it OK. And then just like in this column, if you needed in other ones, go ahead and pull it down. So now where we have the USA selected in our drop down, we have Christina, Mark, Randall, and a blank space. If you remember, we included a couple of blank spaces in case we had new sales reps. So let's go ahead and add one. Let's just say we have a new sales rep named Richard. Now if we go back to our sales reps, Richard has been added. Now we're going to do the same thing with our sales support rep. We're going to create our drop down list based on the sales rep that is entered. To do that, we're going to data. We're going to go over to data validation, allow as list, and we're going to use our indirect function. This time we're going to select cell B2, and we do not need the second dollar sign so we can get rid of it and we're going to tell it OK. Now we get this error that says the source currently evaluates to an error. Do you want to continue? The reason we're getting this is because our sales rep is empty. Now it's going to be OK to tell this we want to continue because as we start filling this in, it's going to be OK. So tell it yes. And now if you need to carry it down, we can go ahead and pull it down. And now if we select a sales rep from the US of Christina, under the support reps, we get Ben, Emma, Olivia, Sam, and then a blank. So let's go ahead and say we have a new support rep named Zach. If we go back up under Christina, Zach is now there. So let's go ahead and select him. And then let's look at a few more. If we go to Europe and we select Emily, Emily's cell support reps are Alex, Anna, Julia, and Mike. Same thing for Asia. Let's go to Addison, and Addison's reps are Colton, Jade, Jordan, and Lydia. And that's the quickest and easiest way to create multiple dependent dropdowns in Microsoft Excel. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure to click that subscribe button before you leave. And don't forget to hop on out to my website, melcompton.com, for written instructions for this tutorial and so much more. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.